So if we think about economic growth, we can write down a simple decomposition to think about some of the sources of where it comes from. So let's think about GDP per capita. I'm going to write pop for population. Well, that simply equals GDP per worker, n will be for workers here, times the number of workers as a share of the population. Right? We would call this the share employed or something like that. Right? This term here is what we call average labor productivity. Now to think about how these things might evolve and then therefore affect GDP per capita, our main measure of economic outcomes, right? um, let's think about the problem like this. Um, we all know that the United States and many developed countries are going to be grain, i.e. get older demographically over the next 40, 50 years. Um, so what would be the impact of that may be considered in light of this simple decomposition? So let's imagine we have two years, 1960 uh, and 2004. Right? And in 1960, let's say our average labor productivity, y over n, right, is 38,000, these are actual numbers, I should say, $38,034. And then in 2004, Sorry, that was in 1960, I meant to say. In 2004, it's $77,858. Well, let's also imagine that the share of the employed popul the share of the population that's employed, or N over pop, right, in 1960 is 36.4%. And now imagine in 2004, it's 47.4%. I'll give you a second to think about why this percentage might have increased over time. Main reason, presumably, is simply that women moved into the labor force in much greater numbers between 1960 and 2004. So here's the problem. If we know these numbers, imagine we want to think about what is the situation going to be in 2048, so 44 years later. Right? So let's imagine uh, the following. Over the next 44 years, let's say the share of the population that is working okay, returns to the 1960 number. Okay? So that in 2048, we're back at 36.4%. As population ages, more and more people retire, there's fewer uh, fertility continues to fall and fewer people are born, that we end up with labor force participation that's much, much lower as a share of the population. Right? Back to the original level here. Okay? If we think that labor productivity increased the same percentage terms from uh, 1960 to 2004 as it will do between 2004 and 2048, right? This allows us to back out exactly what is GDP per capita expected to be in 2048. But to get there, we need to fill in a couple uh, uh, in what we know. Okay? First off, we could ask ourselves, well, okay, given these numbers, what is G GDP per capita in 2004? Well, applying our formula right here, we can simply read it off uh, the numbers we have here. Right? Uh, and that, I'll uh, simply 77,858 right, times 0 0.474, or roughly speaking, it's uh, $36,904. So in 2004, GDP per capita was approximately $37,000. Right? So that gives us one number. So what is GDP in uh, 2048? So in 2048, that's how we calculate GDP given these numbers. Obviously, we're missing what labor productivity is in 2048. That's our missing piece. 
But if I already said that the percentage increase is the same from in these 44 years as in these 44 years, we can think about it this way. Right? So GDP per capita right, is going to be equal, and let's reverse it. I'll say N over pop we know is going to go back to the original 1960 level. So that's 0 0.364 times labor productivity in 2048. We can think about that as simply a percentage increase of the same amount from 1960 to 20, 2004 applied to the next uh, 44 years. Right? So how is an easy way to write that down? Well, I'm going to work down here now. It's that initial level, 77. 858 times, and an easy way to think about the percentage increase is just 77,858 over 38,034. That gives us, if you just do this simple math, at the end of the day, 58,014 as GDP per capita in 2048, right? So again, this piece right here is giving us labor productivity in 2048. So when we think about the grain of America, it's not that the fall labor productivity is going to decimate GDP per capita as long as productivity continues to rise over time. And as we discuss in class, there's a number of reasons to think labor productivity will continue to rise.